Welcome back, everybody, to the all-encompassing series of system.text.json, or STJ. Uh, yeah, system.text.json, one of my favorite things built into .NET to serialize and deserialize JSON or read and write JSON with .NET, yeah. which is cool. Mm -hmm. Now, we've been talking a lot about just reading and writing the, our .NET objects to, to files or yep. just kind of like strings that are in here, but yep. often you're getting this stuff from the internet. A lot of the times, I mean, it's that day and age where you get stuff from the, the cloud, the wow. internet. Wow, yes. it's up there. Yes. Yes. So everything that we've showed today mm -hmm. and all the videos that we've done all applies, right? Because yeah. it's just the same it's, exact stuff. Right. We were working it in the console app because that's super easy. Yep. And but it works. It works in the web. It works in ASP.NET Core. Yeah. And it works in a MAUI app. Works anywhere. Anything yeah. where done it runs. Mm -hmm. But when you're dealing with web requests, you know, you want to do some different things. Right. You know, you can check the requests to see if they're valid, if things yeah. are coming back, handle things appropriately. So that means when we're dealing with web requests, you can do the exact same stuff that we did before, which is you know, deserialize or serialize and put mm -hmm. it up. But there's a lot of like, like little helpers. So sure. most developers, especially if you're consuming uh, data inside of your app, are going to be making a web request, pulling it down, right. and then taking that JSON blob and turning it into objects. Yes. So I want to show you some ways, Matt, of simplifying that process. I like that. Yes. Less code to write. Less mistakes to make. Yes. So let's take a look over here. Now I'm inside of my .NET MAUI workshop. I'll put a link to that uh, below, uh, where you can actually learn from start to finish building applications uh, with .NET MAUI for Windows, Mac, iOS, mm -hmm. Android, things like that. But what we can see here is a few lines of code that pretty much any developer ever have written, probably, which is yeah. get an HTTP client, get a string asynchronously, and then deserialize it. Yeah. This one specifically here is going to be a list of monkeys. So it's just a bunch of strings and yep. integers, some doubles in here that are coming through. So if I run this, if I had a breakpoint here, just on my Windows machine, uh, we're going to see that, uh, I'll add a few breakpoints actually, that I'm going to go off uh, to the internet, get the monkeys. Here we have our JSON blob, so I can open it up. We have all this JSON, mm -hmm. the list of monkeys. Pretty nice. Continue on. And I have all my monkeys that are deserialized. Yep. So this is essentially what we've been doing this entire series, except we just pulled it from the internet instead of opening a file. That's it, correct. However, when we're just getting a string async, there's a few things that can happen there. It can obviously like fail, and it could just yeah. throw an exception, things like that. And then, of course, the deserialization could have an issue as well. Of course, we've talked about a lot of ways of fine-tuning yep. that deserialization process, but we haven't talked about how we can handle the HTTP things here. So here's what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and instead of getting string async, I'm going to say get async. Okay. Okay. Now in this case, um, we're not going to use deserialize uh, here because this is no longer J JSON. This is just a request that's been sent out to the internet. Sure. If I hover um, over the get async um, here, I'm just going to delete that. We're going to see that uh, this get async is going to go ahead and return a HTTP response message. Mm -hmm. So we're going to wait on it. We're going to get it back. Now what's cool here is that on the request, I can go and I can check things. Like I can actually get a status code. I can get a request message. I can get the versions. I can get all these things from the request itself, right. such as if there was a successful status code. Because I don't want to deserialize the JSON if I don't have a successful message yeah. back. Or yeah. I probably want to handle that a different way. But I do know if I do have a successful message code, then I would probably want to deserialize it. Else, I would probably want to do something else. Yep. You know what I mean? That's my type of bear handling. Yes. So now what I could do is, from this, I could get the content out as a string and then do the same exact deserialization. But actually, if I scroll to the top of the file, I've added this using of system net HTTP JSON, which are extensions methods for system net HTTP using system text JSON. Cool. Yeah, so really cool. So what that means is that now I can come in and say monkey list here, and Copilot is going to finish the sentence for me, of course. Awesome. But it is going to do response.content.read from JSON async. Okay? And the content here is the string content that's coming back. Right. So previously I'd have to take that, I'd have to parse it, do all this stuff, but now 
this is going to come in and it's going to automatically say read from JSON async and it's going to give it this sort of template that it is a list of monkeys. Uh -huh. So now I'm just going to run the exact same code. Now it's actually the same amount of code, but it gives me more flexibility as I'm handling these web requests. Okay. So that's what's kind of nice about these extension methods in general. So now I'm going to get the same exact thing. My application uh, should pop up here. There we go. Get monkeys. Sure enough, here we have our request. So here we can see we have a we have a, a, a OK message, a 200 coming mm -hmm. back, version information. So now we can really inspect all this stuff that we want to do. I'm just going to hit continue, and I get all of my all monkeys, of monkeys back are there. that I would expect that's coming in. So super duper nice, and I have all my monkeys in my list. So that is definitely one way of doing it. And then additionally, you know, if you are using source generators as well, you can also pass that in too. So actually, if I go into my monkey here, with my monkey class, mm -hmm. Now, one thing is really cool is you can give it this thing called a JSON serializer context. Okay. And what I'm saying is that instead of using reflection or any other things like that, I'm going to basically create a, um, a source generator for a list of monkeys. Okay. And this is really, really cool. So this gives you a lot of optimizations and performance enhancements. And you can use this with normal deserialization, but you can also use it here. So here I can just say, um, monkey context dot default okay. dot list monkey. So what this is doing is it's going to basically do the same thing, but it's going to use that source generator that's uh -huh. optimized ahead of time to bring it back. So this is the monkey context, and I have this list that's coming in. So we can see here, here's all the auto-generated monkey context, JSON, serialization, stuff that's coming in. So it generates all of this for me automatically, which is super nice which means I don't have to worry about finely tuning and optimizing that so that way it's all generated ahead of time for me, which is really, cool. really cool. And again, if I run this, I can use that same exact sort of monkey context in many ways um, for this or just for normal deserialization. Right. And sure enough, boom, I have all my monkeys coming back like nice. we would expect. Boom. So those nice little helpers that make yeah. it really easy to work with web requests. Nice. Built in to system net HTTP. P H T T P JSON. JSON. Yes. yes. Which uses system tech JSON under the hood. Yep. So nice little extension method. There's many, many more in there. Mm -hmm. So we will link to documentation below to all those goodies for all the stuff that you saw here today and the workshop and of course System Tech JSON and all of the videos here that we've been putting out on System Tech JSON. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up, jam that subscribe button, and ring that notification bell. So you get notified every single time we put out a video here on the .NET YouTube. Really appreciate it. That's gonna do it for this video. So until next time, I'm James. I'm Matt. And thanks for watching.